Our help is in the name of the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Good evening. This evening we celebrate Quinquagesima Sunday, that is the final Sunday in pre-Lent, as Lent begins this Wednesday on Ash Wednesday. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so by following your holy will we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. And dear brothers and sisters, let us take a moment, confess our sins to God in ways that we have failed him and our neighbor in thought, word, deed, and omission, so that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience. Let's say together the second form of the Confidior found on page 66. I confess to Almighty God in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. For your penance, I would ask you to do an act of kindness for someone else sometime in the next few days. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I am the Lord, this is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See now, the earlier things have come to pass. New ones I now foretell. Before they spring into being, I announce them to you. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from the end of the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have called us to new ways and new beginnings. You have made us a new creation. May we be ever thankful for past mercies, ever joyful for past favors, and be ever more passionate to serve you. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated for our first reading. The first reading, a reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, I will lead her into the desert and speak to her in her heart. She shall respond there as in the days of her youth, when she came up from the land of Egypt. I will espouse you to me forever. I will espouse you in right and in justice, in love and in mercy. I will espouse you in fidelity, and you shall know the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please respond, the Lord is kind and merciful. 
The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and for all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all your inequities, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abundant, abundant in kindness. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us from according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful. As far as the east is from the est, west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. The second reading is a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do we need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you? You are our letter, written in our hearts, known and read by all, shown to be a letter of Christ ministered by us, written not in ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets that are hearts of flesh. Such confidence we have through Christ toward God, not that ourselves we are qualified to take credit for anything as coming from us. Rather, our qualification comes from God, who has indeed qualified us as ministers of a new covenant, not of letter, but of spirit. For the letter brings death, but the spirit gives life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise Thanks to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Repent, says the Lord, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. The disciples of John and of the Pharisees were accustomed to fast. People came to him and objected, Why do the disciples of John and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not? Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunken cloth onto an old cloth, cloak. If he does, its fullness pulls away, the new from the old, and the tear gets worse. Likewise, no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the skins are ruined. Rather, new wine is poured into fresh wineskins. This is the Gospel of the Lord. No one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the skins are ruined. These words are taken from today's Gospel according to St. Mark, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I don't know about you, but I have never had the opportunity to drink wine out of skin. I don't know what I would do if someone brought it to me, but if you have, let me know what it's like. I'd like to, I'm kind of curious about that. But why is Jesus talking about old and new wineskins and old and new cloth? Well, when we see that the disciples of John and the Pharisees are getting on Jesus and his disciples for not fasting, they're not following what they have always thought was the right thing to do. But the circumstances have changed since the Son of God is in their midst right then and there. And the Pharisees, especially, are having trouble putting this new information and reconciling it with what they already thought was written in stone. Therefore, this is like new wine being poured into old wine skins. Now we sometimes like to think of ourselves as being able to be very flexible and change, but we, I think, sometimes get in our own minds too, set in our ways of thinking. And I remember when I was going through the seminary, I was constantly getting my mind expanded by what was going in there and what I thought I knew I didn't know anything about. It was a completely new way of looking at things. And that's what Jesus brought then. Because Jesus put a whole new perspective on what had always been taught. It was just interpreted in a way that Jesus didn't interpret it. And it was so entrenched for a couple thousand years that it took a lot for people to change. We need to pray that we can be open to change. And that's why the season of Lent is so transformative. Because if we follow what the church says are the three pillars of Lent, which we'll hear about again on Wednesday, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, then we can kind of rejuvenate our own wineskins and be ready to take in that new information and new perspectives. Breaking away from maybe our habits that aren't bringing us to God or ways of being a little bit more generous to those around us to the point where it hurts a little bit. It pushes us. That's a proper way for almsgiving. And purposely neglecting something from ourselves so that we can more easily fight against temptation when it comes. That's what it's all about. Rejuvenating ourselves so that we are bigger, better, stronger, and faster, as they say, in our pursuit of holiness and heaven. So as we wrap up the pre-Lenten season and prepare to start what's called Great Lent, let us maybe think about ways that we can use this upcoming time of penitence, fasting, and almsgiving to make ourselves a little bit more like Jesus. We'll not be perfect, but we can be a little bit more perfect than we are today. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us now stand and turn to page 71 and say together the creed that unites us as Christians. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Father, God begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. We come now before the Father to ask him for what we need, knowing that he will hear us. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that she may mirror her, in her actions Jesus' compassionate and healing mission, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, that God will turn hearts away from war and violence and protect the most vulnerable, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all married and engaged couples, that they may look to Christ as a model for their love, cherishing and respecting one another as he desires, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill, especially those on our parish prayer list, that the healing love of the Spirit will touch them and bring them holiness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. And for whom this Mass is offered, for the repose of the soul of Bishop Jerry Rafalco, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, especially Regina Say, who is buried from our parish Saturday, and those who will die today, that they may come to share in the fullness of Christ's glory in the heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and merciful God, we turn to you in our time of trouble. Hear the prayers, hear our prayers, that we might be glad and rejoice with you forever, with your Son our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless the sacrifice we prepare for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Receive this honor of Holy Trinity, which will make a memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and all the saints, and those who like the memory of the honor of earth, proceed for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sacrifice for my name, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Almighty Father, through this holy oblation, may we be ever conscious of your love and thankful for your mercy. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. You give us the season of anticipation that takes us from the joy of the incarnation to the penitential mood of fasting and the contemplation of Christ's passion. As we prepare to abstain from worldly trappings, open our hearts and minds to a spirit of true contrition and of loving reverence for you. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints in the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy Sacrifice of the Mass continues with Eucharistic Prayer 2, which is found on page 82 if you're following along. We give thanks to you, God our Father, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, whom in these last days you have sent us as Savior, Redeemer, and Messenger of your will. He is your word, inseparable from you. Through him you have made all things, and in him you were well pleased. You sent him from heaven to a virgin's womb. There he dwelt and was made flesh. He was revealed as your son, born through the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin. While he suffered, he fulfilled your will and gained for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands to free from suffering those who believed in you. When he was betrayed to his freely chosen suffering, thereby to destroy death, to break the chains of darkness, to crush hell beneath his feet, to give light to the just, to make a covenant, and to manifest his resurrection. He took bread, he gave you thanks, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In like manner, he took the cup and said, This is my blood, which is poured out for you. When Ever you do this, do it in memory of me. Together, calling then his death and resurrection to mind, we offer you the bread and the cup. We thank you for allowing us to come before you and to serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church to gather all in unity. Grant to all who partake of these holy mysteries the fullness of the Holy Spirit for the strengthening of their faith in the truth. So may we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, may glory and honor be yours with the Holy Spirit in your Holy Church now and forever and ever. Let us now sing with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior taught us. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Let us say together the first communion prayer found on page 97. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. For those who are joining us online or for personal reasons cannot receive the body and blood of Christ today, please join me now in the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the table of the Lord.
So, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, through this sacred banquet, you unite us to your Son. May we come to know and love you through him, the bridegroom of our souls. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us bless, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me now in the prayer of St. Michael. Holy Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join me now in a prayer for peace with the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you for bearing with me for adding that in tonight. I thought we just needed to pray for a little bit more peace in the world tonight. So. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Remain in the state of grace. Fight evil wherever you find it. Spread joy wherever you go. And don't forget, Ash Wednesday, 9 a.m., 5.30 p.m. Come here and get your ash. Mm -hmm.